of the night on Most Shocking. A clerk turns the tables on a crook, triggering a hot lead frenzy. Then, a man fights off a knife-wielding robber, but suffers a brutal parting shot. And a village of vigilantes gives a wife beater a taste of his own medicine. Plus, an alert team of jewelers dogpiles a would-be diamond thief. Then later, in this small motel, armed robbers check in, but they don't check out. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking. Civilian justice. Hardyville, South Carolina. It's a few minutes before closing time at Herb and Florence Tolar's liquor store. As always, the family is on guard. Just one year before, Herb was robbed at gunpoint. Since that terrifying night, he's been determined to protect himself. I said, if a person pulls a gun on me in a robbery, again, I will kill him. He's about to put his deadly resolution to the test. A masked gunman bursts in, demanding cash. The crook spots the family's daughter, Stacy, just off camera, and orders her onto the ground. I really felt like that he was going to shoot us. I, I, I was very, very afraid for my life. With his family in jeopardy, Herb's rage is stoked to its boiling point. When the robber held the gun to my daughter's head, I wanted to kill him. I wanted to get my hands on him and kill him. The criminal doesn't realize Herb has a gun at his waist, and the vengeful shopkeeper is determined to fight back. Herb slowly moves into fighting position. I was purposely backing up toward him. I don't care whether he shot me or not. With his life on the line, Herb makes his move. The angry store owner pounces on his attacker, hoping to disarm him. The unexpected fight scares the bad guy into bolting. I immediately got up off the floor, pulled my automatic pistol, and thought to myself, if I got nine shots, I should be able to hit him with one of them. Herb shoots three times before his gun jams. The violent incident is a wake-up call for the Tolars. The family makes the heartbreaking decision to close their store for good. It's a bitter pill to swallow. But after three decades serving his town, Herb Tolar has only one regret. I was disappointed in that my gun had jammed and I was not able to blow his brains out. Town, New Jersey. A man enters a local jewelry store and makes a beeline for the expensive watches. Jeweler Lynn Holden assists him. And right away, something seems off. Normally, when a customer comes in, you know, they look at you. But the entire time, he never really made eye contact with me and he kept looking like side to side the shop was robbed only a few months prior and the employees are on high alert 
Lynn signals a co-worker, Greg Kettle, with a look. He stands guard just in case. We thought something was wrong. She felt something was wrong. And um, so we took all the precautionaries in case something did happen. It turns out their suspicions are dead on. The thief grabs the watches and heads for the door. It's a brazen move. But the store employees have some moves of their own. Once I realized he was actually going to do something, I mean, I instinctively just kind of got in his face. The offender refuses to hand over the merchandise and bolts for the exit, only to be nabbed by another co-worker. The hooligan has swung around the room, but still won't release the goods. There was so much action going on that, you know, you almost felt like you were in a movie rather than uh, in real life. But this is no movie. The employees struggle hard to keep the perp from running. And it takes five men to muscle him to the ground. We were just trying to protect what was rightfully ours. We just felt like we needed to do something. And in hindsight, when I think about it again, I'm saying, why would I do that? He could have a weapon, he could be carrying a knife, a gun, but your instincts kind of take over. Moments later, police show up. And the tackled thief is arrested on multiple charges. This not-so-sly crook thought he could make off with $60,000 in watches. But the quick actions of the store employees made it blatantly clear. His time was up. Managua, Nicaragua. Police are called in after a man hits his sister-in-law with the broad side of a machete. Once officers disarm the abuser, a relative unleashes a verbal tirade. The man swats her aside. And cops try to keep the peace. Even though he's outnumbered, the bully is ready to scrap. And he gets his wish. The two officers are powerless to stop the raging mob. The melee is a magnet for bystanders itching for a fight. Once the fracas dies down, the bullheaded bruiser rails against his attackers. Another irate neighbor reaches her boiling point and charges the man again. This time he gets a shovel blow to the head. But even that doesn't shut him up. Finally, the crisis cools down. And officers step in to disperse the violent vigilantes. But in a neighborhood that fiercely takes care of its own, mob justice just might have the last word. Coming up, a pawn shop clerk takes a rubber shotgun. Then his dignity. Then an armed crook unsheaths his blade. Give me the money. Give me the money. 
his victim unleashes a beating. Plus, a man holds up a motel until a sharpshooting desk clerk hits him with Glock and all. That's next on Most Shocking, Civilian Justice. Central Ohio. As a mother and child check into a motel, a masked man rushes in, holding a revolver. Desk clerk Brennan Castillo is stuck. He said, I'm not playing, give me all the effing money now. Brennan immediately complies. I was scared. Needed to get him out of there as fast as I could. There was a child in there. But the male desk clerk has something else up his sleeve. A 40 caliber Glock. He pretends to help Brennan with the till. When suddenly... He pulls the pistol and blasts the bag. I knew that the other employee had a gun. I was very surprised when he pulled that gun and fired because I didn't think he would ever do anything like that. All three slugs rip into the robber. Just missing the mom and her baby. He was maybe an inch or two away from the mother and the child. The thief is lucky to be alive, but when he's released from the hospital, Antoine Stevens is convicted of aggravated robbery and sentenced to six years behind bars. I'm just glad it's over. I do feel that the robber could have harmed someone, and I thank God that the other front desk clerk was there. The thief is lucky to live. The employee who shot Stevens quit his job at the motel and now works at a gun store. Quincy, Massachusetts. While the rest of the world celebrates New Year's Eve, this attendant works the graveyard shift at a local gas station. A hooded crook casually enters, pretending to be a paying customer. But his laid-back act doesn't last long. Give me the money. Out of his belt, he pulls an eight-inch carving knife. Give me the money. He wants cash. And there's no doubt he'll draw blood to get it. The worker insists that the register is empty. Then suddenly turns the tables. The fearless employee wrestles his attacker toward the door. It's a losing battle for the flyweight hoodlum. Unfortunately, he has razor sharp steel on his side. The robber unleashes a right hook directly into the attendant's eye. The clerk is too injured to give chase as the criminal stumbles away. Good Samaritans come to the wounded man's aid. Luckily, the victim was hit with the knife's handle and not the blade. But that doesn't make his attacker any less guilty. Matthew Houter is quickly caught and convicted of criminal mayhem. He is sentenced to three to five years behind bars. Thankfully, this clerk's brave rebuke of a brutal thug didn't keep him from seeing New Year's Day.
Grand Rapids, Michigan. A man walks into a convenience store with one goal in mind. Stealing money any way he can. The clerks are busy behind the counter. And the only other customer is an elderly man. And with a wad of 20s sticking out of the patron's pocket, it seems like the perfect setup for an easy score. While he's distracted playing scratch-offs, the crook sidles up behind him. But when the overeager robber goes for the green, he gets a big surprise. instant he touches the money. The customer turns and unloads a barrage of bare-knuckled blows. This is no feeble senior citizen. He's a triple threat. Ex-Marine, iron worker, and one-time Golden Gloves boxer, who proves he's still tough as nails. With the help of a cashier, he subdues the stunned pickpocket until police arrive. Jesse Daniel Ray pleads guilty to assault with intent to commit robbery and is sentenced to six months behind bars. This elderly man seemed like an easy mark until he dished out an old school lesson in hard knocks and rough justice. Statesboro, Georgia. A young man walks into a pawn shop holding a shotgun. But he's not here to hawk it. Clerk calls for help. But even though he's just outside, the owner, Tommy Hunt, doesn't have a clue what's happening. Yeah, I noticed an individual walk up to me and say, hey, do y'all pawn rifles? And I was like, yeah, we pawn rifles. It's not unusual for a customer to bring in a gun. So just take it into the store. But this time is different. With a barrel in his face, the cashier lays his life on the line in a deadly game of tug-of-war. He rips the weapon out of the robber's hands and then cracks him on the back of the head with his own gun. The employee's fast reflexes not only save the store from being robbed, they save his life. No doubt in my mind, when you see that video and they're fighting over that gun and he's looking down and you can see his finger trying to get it in that trigger hole. So if he would have got it in there, bam, he would have shot him. This budding young burglar tried his first stick up, but instead of scoring some cash, he ended up pawning his shotgun for seven years in prison and a major headache. Any burglar that comes in the store is not expecting the, the clerk to take the, his own weapon from him and, and beat him with it. Still to come, a competitive customer tables a holdup by beating the crook with a stool. But first, a brazen robber gets crushed by 300 pounds of Good Samaritan. A nine-year-old boy risked his life to save his father. Straight ahead on Most Shocking Civilian Justice. Whitehall, Ohio. It's near closing time at a local ice cream parlor where a last-minute patron lingers. 
Manager Dee Dee Grandy doesn't notice the man as she wraps things up behind the counter. It was very quiet. We were actually doing like some of our closing procedures, which, you know, mopping, sweeping, cleaning, and things like that. Nothing red flagged me at all. As Dee Dee puts the cash in a deposit envelope, the man approaches. He leaned in and asked if we were accepting applications. I said no, and that's when he snatched the bag out of my hand. The bandit makes a break for it, then hits a wall. The thief finds his exit blocked by a six foot four, 300 pound man. And he's one tough customer. He slams the startled crook to the floor and pins him there. But this crime stopper didn't learn his moves in the ring. He's actually a corrections officer who deals with hardened criminals every day. It was like a wrestling match going on right in front of me. The man holds the struggling thief down until police arrive and put on the cuffs. The brave corrections officer wishes to remain anonymous, but the staff will never forget it. We were just lucky that out of all of our customers, he was the one that was there. This robber planned to grab the cash and split. But when he went up against a heavyweight contender, his lightweight plan got taken to the mat. Cali, Columbia. It's a shakedown gone bad as a pair of brutal thugs attack the owner of a vegetable stand. Hacking at the man with a knife and machete. But they're not prepared for a little resistance from the man's nine-year-old son. The fearless boy pushes the machete-wielding woman away from his father. She viciously shoves him aside. But as she resumes her attack, the dogged child yanks her back with all his might. Thanks to the boy's fortitude, the two assailants end their deadly onslaught. A short time later, police track the attackers down and haul them in to face justice. Thankfully, their victim survives his wounds. As for the pint-sized protector, he is later awarded for his extreme bravery. Facing sharpened steel on the mean streets of Cali, a nine-year-old boy proved his mettle and saved his father's life. Titusville, Florida. A friendly old man shoots the breeze with a convenience store cashier. Both are blissfully unaware of the shady person who just entered the store. The customer buys a tall boy. When suddenly... Purchase was just a ploy to open the register. The robber says he has a gun, but his finger in a napkin is fooling no one. So when the thief runs back behind the counter, the wispy employee zaps him with a stun gun. It has no effect on the brawling brute. The worker is pushed down, but he's not out. He trips the thug and hits the alarm. Then the crook pops right back up, only to get slammed with another surprise attack. From out of nowhere, the elderly customer pounds the perp with a stool. 
but it just angers the suspect more. First, he clocks the clerk, and then drops the old man with a wicked right cross. But when the grandpa goes down, the cashier goes ballistic. Fueled by anger and adrenaline, the much smaller attendant wrestles the robber outside. When a good Samaritan joins the fray, the burglar runs off, almost losing his shorts in the process. Back inside, the old man regains consciousness, but the ordeal is not over yet. The hoodlum returns, but this time he ignores the open register. He's just looking for his keys. The bystander tries to trap the felon inside, but the bruiser breaks free. He doesn't get far before cops hunt him down. The muscle-bound bully thought this mini-market heist would be a major pushover. But in this David versus Goliath robbery, the giant didn't count on a senior citizen smackdown. Up next, a held-up customer fights a battle of brawn versus bullets. And a group of home invaders face off against an enraged mob. And later, a gun-toting crook gets outmatched by a little old lady. When most shocking civilian justice returns. Indianapolis, Indiana. For convenience store clerk Jeevon Sherwa, a normal night of cleaning up shop suddenly takes a dangerous turn. A small-time crook has been casing the place for hours, and he's wielding a pool cue. He just went straight to the cash station. He didn't see me on the corner. But as soon as he breaks into the cash box, Jeevan pounces. The pool cue culprit suddenly finds himself behind the eight ball. As Jeevan pockets him with a broom handle. I didn't scream or I didn't do anything. I just walked by and I started hitting him with the broomstick. Thinking the felon has a friend outside, Jeevan locks the front door. The bandit tries to run, but he can't hide. Now carrying a larger stick, Jeevan confronts his foe and makes a chilling discovery. I saw he had a knife in the pocket, so I pull out his knife and went for the alarm. Disarmed and disgraced, the cowardly hood grabs up a few dollars and runs for the back door, with Jeevan right behind him. The thief gets away. But he won't soon forget the night this one-man SWAT team used his broom to sweep away the trash. Managua, Nicaragua. An angry crowd converges on a neighborhood household. Moments ago, the residents surprised two thieves who had broken in. Even worse, the homeowner's infant son is still trapped inside. Now 
two of the burglars must defend themselves from a furious horde that's screaming for justice. The criminals are armed with concrete and machetes. But the furious throng does not back down. Instead, they go to war. Suddenly, one of the robbers breaks free. He bolts for safety with the enraged lynch mob in pursuit. A cry rings out from a nearby alley. Like lions frenzied by the taste of blood, angry residents pounce, cornering their prey. But in their thirst for vengeance, the pursuers rush to judgment. The man they beat with stones and pipes is the victim of the robbery. His mother angrily defends him against the advancing vigilantes. Finally, police arrive to restore order. With the citizens still in a frenzy, it's impossible for police to determine who was a criminal and who was a victim. But the crowd eagerly makes the distinction. And the guilty parties are given a ride downtown. When they realize their choice is between jail and a neighborhood ruled by a vengeful mob. These thieves willingly take their chances before a judge. Memphis, Tennessee. A thief with a loaded pistol cases a convenience store. But with the cashier tucked away behind bulletproof glass, the crook goes for the lone customer. While the store clerk pleads for the shopper's safety, the victim tries to disarm the gunman. A move that could end his life. You're talking about violent crimes. Sometimes you're just backed up against the wall. You've complied and you think, hey, this guy's going to kill me. But the criminal quickly regains control, aiming his pistol at point-blank range. The victim makes a desperate break for the storeroom. Hot on the man's heels, the robber fires once in the air. The gunman in this robbery made it clear that he was serious. But in the back, just off camera, the customer quickly turns the tables and gets the firearm. He'd been shot at by the suspect. He felt like his life was in immediate danger, and he felt like he had no other choice but to disarm the suspect. The criminal gets away with nothing, not even his weapon. This thug thought having a gun gave him all the power. But when his victim dared to fight back, he learned that power is fleeting. Coming up, a woman holds up a pizza shop and gets a piping hot rebuke. Plus, a victim beats the odds by fighting off two violent muggers. Then, a teenage girl pushes past a hooded thug. Straight ahead on most chucking civilian justice. St. Albans, Vermont. 
This restaurant is famous for delivering pizza fast and hot. But when a young woman comes in, packing heat of her own... Night manager Warren Marcheseau's blood runs cold. She stated that she wanted all the money. For whatever reason, I just didn't think that was a good idea. The girl is much shorter, but stands tall behind the barrel of an enormous pistol. Then... With whiplash reflexes, Warren yanks the firearm toward the counter. I lunged for the gun. I tried as hard as I could to pull that gun out. The smaller thief struggles like a fish on a hook. Without a second thought, Warren's co-worker, Annie Ashley, rushes to his aid. So I'm pretty scared, but I grab up the mop and run up there and start beating on the counter, trying to scare the guy and, you know, hollering. The overwhelmed robber panics and flees. Warren immediately dials 911. While Annie rushes out of the store and after the suspect. So I went ahead and got the tag number and description of the woman driving. Annie's quick detective work leads to the offender's arrest. The young crook is convicted and could spend up to seven years in prison. This petite robber showed a willingness to kill to get what she wanted. And though grabbing her gun may have saved Warren's life... He knows the outcome could have been much different. Definitely, I wouldn't recommend that anybody do this, but at the same time, you know, these things happen from time to time, and you kind of have to do what your instincts tell you. In the end, this bite-sized punk got served a fresh, hot slice of civilian justice. London, England. Closed circuit cameras focus in on a violent mugging already in progress. The two attackers thought they could double up on the lone man for an easy score. But it's not going as planned. The target resists the assault, turning it into a brutal fight for survival. The criminals jerk and kick at the innocent man while reaching for his wallet. But the victim keeps them at bay, and then he's able to tear himself from their menacing grip and run away. When this man refused to give in, the only thing these muggers managed to get was a handful of trouble. Dothan, Alabama. A teenage convenience store supervisor counts the day's profits, but is suddenly interrupted by a menacing figure with a nine millimeter. The hooded thug demands the money, but the girl thinks it's a joke and pushes the gun away only to be viciously pistol-whipped a second later. The message is clear. He's dead serious. The gunman reaches for the cash clasped in her hand. But she fights him off. And what he thought would be a quick holdup turns into a frenzied battle. The young girl claws and thrusts her way toward the exit. As the robber tries to maintain control, 
It doesn't work. She bolts to the front of the store. And the thief escapes out the back. Empty-handed. This crook shot at some fast cash turned into a backlash of trouble that left him with nothing but the cops hot on his trail. Up next, a scrappy senior citizen teaches a gunman to respect his elders. Next, on Most Shocking, Civilian Justice. Hampshire, England. An elderly store owner restocks the shelves with fruit preserves. But she's about to find herself in a jam. A young man storms in, covering his face. In his hand, an enormous high-caliber pistol. He demands cash and orders the woman to lay on the floor. But this plucky grandma is no easy mark. She quickly snatches the barrel of the gun and fights desperately to tear it from his hands. After struggling with a woman three times his age, the cowardly crook makes a hasty retreat. The old lady is shaken, but still has work to do. Undaunted, she finishes tidying up before calling the police. This criminal thought he had a walk-on part in Easy Money. Instead, he found himself playing the patsy in Granny Get Your Gun. It's the last thing cops advise. Taking the law into your own hands. Give the money. But when criminals strike, and there's no time to think... Instinct takes over. No! And sometimes the only recourse...